Hello and welcome to another edition of Midlands Business Update. This week we'll be taking a look behind the scenes at the commercial vehicle show at the NEC and also finding out about the Enterprise Centre, which is one of the fastest growing in the Midlands. That's in Birmingham. First, though, the Black Country Chamber of Commerce announced it was setting up a new consultative forum at the end of last year after a restructure of its organisation and that forum has just held its first meeting. So, who's on it? What do they talk about? And does your business need to get involved or informed? Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Tony Seaton from Blue Sky Corporate Finance in Birmingham, who's been elected as one of its members. Tony, thank you for joining us. Before we talk about the forum itself, tell us a little bit about, about your business then and your background. I'm a chartered accountant by my background. I've been doing it now for 30 years. Very much um, based in the black country and the Midlands is my base. Blue Sky were a niche boutique corporate finance firm, very much helping the SMEs of the world. And particularly in the last few years, it's been increasingly difficult for them to find support and help when they're looking for finance or the business support since the demise of Business Link and other, other enterprises like that. So really it's trying to help those people get, get a start in business and grow and bring the black country and the Midlands back to the prosperity that we know it should have. And you've been involved with the Black Country Chamber for quite some time then? Um, five or six years. I was originally, before the consultative forum, the Chamber of Commerce used to have four divisions for the four boroughs of the Black Country. And I was on the board of the Dudley Division. And I got to know that we particular emphasis on access to finance and helping businesses raise finance. And when the opportunity came to the consultative forum, I felt that I had something to offer going forward for the Black Country and much more on a whole, whole black country basis rather than just working within the Dudley area. So I think the issues we found and why one of the reasons for the Consultative Forum is the issues that Walsall have, the issues that Dudley have are very similar and by working together as a team it's much more productive for us. Pete, Pete businesses are obviously very familiar with the concept of chambers of commerce and what Indeed. they do. Maybe less so with the, 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 the tag of consultative forum. So just explain what the, what the, the, the plans and what the, the background to that is. Um, it was very much a case of getting the people to work as teams. And so it was decided there would be a, a consultative forum of 20 people. And they were elected by the members of the chamber. And it's a wide background of people. There's professional services people like myself, a good variety of manufacturing, construction, other service industries. But it's where we can bring, hopefully, the Chamber closer to its members and will help the drive the Chamber's policy going forward to help the people in the black country. And it's to give a link between the, the board, the Chamber and its members in the black country. I think that sometimes is something that's not always been understood, the link between the, the top and the bottom. And I think that's something that we are trying to bridge. So we'll set up groups and where we want the members to join with us and our aim is to help them. What do they need and what can we bring to them to help them grow their businesses? And we'll be the conduit for that. How did they work, work out who was elected? Was it just it was a any of the members? Or was it a democratic process? I'm all in favour of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what, what, was there particular sectors that needed to be represented? Did you have to have certain members from manufacturing, from service, from Luckily, or? the 20 people actually worked out to be across all... It was a democratic process and it could have been a, a real mixture but it has come out and we've got a really good mixture of people, both experienced people who've worked with the Chamber for many years who know how it works, as a lot of other people that are new to it and can bring fresh ideas and different skills that we haven't got. So I think we're very pleased with the, the 20 people we've got. We've got. We've got all the skills we need. And you had your first meeting in the last few days. Yep. How did that go then? That's good. I think it's the first time we'd all come together, so we actually understood what each other did because a lot of us hadn't met before. And we can see how we can work together because we all have different skills. But a lot of the needs of businesses, they cross more than one skill. It's not just finance. It's not just engineering. And it's how, if one of us sees something, we can work with each other and work as a, very much as a team. And I think that's also bringing the necessary other people in if we need to, to help us with those forums and specific projects. And that's where we'd like our members' input as to what they want to get out of the chamber and what we can do to help them. What do you think the needs of local businesses are then right at the moment? I mean, everybody talks about some, the, the economy recovering, but some sectors faster than others. What, what's, the, what's the feeling on the ground in the black country? I think it's very mixed. From what I hear, some people are doing very well, and it's also very different between the big companies in the area, such as Jaguar Land Rover, and then down to the world of the SME. And it's a very lonely place it can be, being the owner-manager business. Mm. And I think the, the Chamber has a role within both of those organisations. The large companies, it's bringing those companies, helping them work with the smaller companies. There's a lot of opportunities there, making sure those bridges can be built, understood. 
being an SME, lots of people are husband and wife, family teams. It's a lonely place to be in business. It's actually bringing somebody to can bring some help with you, give you some guidance and introduce you to other people as a team and to get a, grow the greater economy. I think the aim of the Chamber is to double the black country economy within five years, and that is what we're working towards. And presumably, as much as possible, actually get Chamber members working with Chamber members to keep all the wealth in the area. Then, Indeed. I think it's one thing we have seen is when you get people together, you sometimes find they don't actually realise their neighbour does a product they may be sourcing from 100 miles away. So it's actually bringing the skills together, because I think we have all the skills that are needed within the Midlands, within a 25-mile radius of where we're sitting here. We've got everything we need, so let's make sure people are aware of it and use those skills. Do you think people are uh, aware of the, the makeup of the black country economy, maybe as much as they should be? I don't think they are. And when you look at the statistics that, that come out every year, there's such a diverse range of industries in, within the black country. You don't think of it necessarily as a visitor economy, but there's an awful lot of visitor attractions within the black country. Wolverhampton Race, of course, the Black Country Museum, the Dudley Zoo, and the retail side, the Merry Hill. There's awful, it's not just manufacturing, but the advanced manufacturing is something that we're world class at. And it's bringing all those attributes together and making them, how, how can one of them leads to the other one? And to make sure, if you don't have the visitor economy, do people want to come and live here? If they haven't got a nice place, do you need the schools? You need the hospitals? And it's the whole community to make the black country a better place to live. Mm. And, and, and we'll talk about training maybe in a yeah. little bit more detail in a minute, because um, that's a lot of money and a lot of restructures going into that, isn't it, nationally at the moment, looking at how best to go. Do you go down the apprentices route? Do you push money down that way? A bit of bad news um, on the agenda this week with the Technical College at, at Walsall announcing it's closing its doors. That, that's quite a blow for the area. Yeah, it? it was a real shock when I heard that. I, I was in, uh, visited it several times and I've been around the place. And it, I always thought it was a, a fantastic example. We, when we talk to employers, all they're saying all the time is, we haven't got the skilled labour, we can't get the engineers or managers to take the businesses forward. Then they're struggling to get those people. People are coming out of colleges and they haven't got the necessary skills. They've got qualifications, but not skills. That's very different, I think, is the, is the key difference. To try and give people skills that are useful is more important. Um, there's obviously been some issues at the college, but. Um, it's going to be bad news that it's the black country, we can't have those skills trained in-house. To catch people at an early age, 14 to 16, introduce them that engineering is a skill and a, a good career to have, rather than so there's all these skills. But we need to get those people into that at an early stage to make sure that they go on to it. And then we're training the people of the future to beat, to beat the rest of the world. Because it's not just the, the, the training actual facilities right. that you're losing, it's the perception, isn't it, as well, of, of, of sort of you know, how vibrant the black, black country is when you see something as high profile as this closing down. Yes, it's almost like a negative manufacturing isn't sexy, but it actually manufacturing is not what it used to be. You walk around the modern factories, it's not all grease and dirt. There's a lot of skills, and it's the, the, uh, the, the TC. Before I know that there's a lot of girls going through that as well, mm -hmm. learning different skills, clothing skills, technical skills, on um, the, the dyes, materials. So there's, there's lots of things people learn, and it's not just manu manufacturing. It's not just nuts and bolts. And, uh, well, I mean, the Bank of England's latest report, I know, said that highlighted the West Midlands as one of the fastest growing areas for the manufacturing industry in Britain. So, so you, you'd argue that you, you need these facilities probably more than ever just to keep the, the, yeah. the, the employers fed with the, the manpower that they need. Uh, so the regular surveys, the Chamber of Commerce do, the quarterly surveys, consistently we're being told the bit, one of the biggest issues is getting skilled staff on board. So we've got to train those people, otherwise we are going to lose work. We, we've got a great opportunity at the moment. The, the economy is growing in the black country, much more second fastest in the, in the UK at the moment. Mm -hmm. Let's capitalise that, but we need those skills for people to do it. Absolutely. Well, I'm talking about capitalising, just going back to your business then, you're obviously helping businesses at the start of their journey to get up on the ground. What, what sort of businesses are out there? What sort of, what, is there a trend at the moment with the sort of people that are coming forward and doing well? I think it's, there's a lot of people doing well, but finance is still an issue, perhaps less than it was 12, 18 months ago. But there's an awful lot of different financial products out there that have come on stream. A lot of people want to grow now, and it's that working capital they need to develop. It's but our own firm, we've been quite a lot involved with the crowdfunding arena. It's become a very large part of the banking world now. People are not as frightened of that now, are they, as they no. maybe were perhaps 12 months ago? It's, it's got credibility, I think. It's a, and it's now actually 
um, overtaking some of the high street banks in the amount it's lending to small businesses. People aren't happy with um, getting very little interest in their bank account if they can earn something elsewhere. There are risks, so you need to be careful what you do. But it's a major source of funding for industry. And it, it fills that gap, which is, I don't think the banks are going to come back to that. They, they have reasons why they can't, and it's not going to be easy for them. So I think um, it's, it's a very big area. So it's just important really for people to know there is choice out there and there are options. And there's a, there's a lot of options out there. Um, then perhaps not the traditional ones, and it's looking at a blended finance, but take some advice from people. There's people there can help you, the Chamber of Commerce, the Local Enterprise Partnership, the Growth Hub. They're all out there. Seek some advice and I'm sure you'll find what you need. Tony, thank you very much for coming in and good luck with your consultative forum. Welcome back to Midlands Business Update. One of the commercial vehicle industry's largest exhibitions has been taking place in our region this week. The CV show spanned three halls of the NEC over three days. And having paid a visit on the opening day myself, it's clear to see why it attracts some 20,000 visitors and causes such a buzz. Big Centre TV's Roshni Patel also dropped in to take a look around. Cars, vans and trucks. This is the current scene at the NEC in Birmingham. One of the region's most renowned exhibitions has made its return to the venue. And the show's director told me exactly what the commercial vehicle show is all about. Uh, it's the largest UK exhibition in the transport and logistics industry. We have here a whole range of exhibitors from vehicle manufacturers, van manufacturers, support industries, tyre manufacturers, and a whole range within the industry. The event is like none other in the UK, and last year the exhibition attracted nearly 19,000 people to the region. I wanted to know the types of people who are most interested in this show. It's quite a, a wide range of people. Um, it, it, it's people in the kind of uh, business sector, and it's going to be small businesses, medium, large businesses. It can also be uh, company directors or people that are just interested in the commercial vehicle world and what's going on in it. I think it attracts people because they can get to see everybody that they maybe haven't got time to see all in one location. Everybody's very busy, short of time, so to come to one location, see all your contacts, see new products, new initiatives, new ideas, networking. So it's just a great event to really get that all done in the space of a few hours. And with Birmingham serving as one of the central transport hubs to the rest of the UK, both Rob and William feel it can only have a positive impact on the future of the transport industry. I think it's very important for the country to realise how important the transport industry is. Uh, it's a little bit of a joke, but the expression is that whatever we use, whatever we get, has to get somewhere. Predominantly it goes on a set of wheels. So this show is very important for that. I think it's good for the transport industry because it, we're in an industry that's heavily populated by passenger car, uh, there's lots of passenger car shows and forums and awareness, but commercial vehicles, which is the lifeblood of the country really, getting the goods around the country, it, there, there's not a big voice for it. So to come to, come to a show like the CV show and get people, consumers, uh, to understand more about commercial vehicles, what they're used for and how they work. Big businesses in every sense there. Now from the NEC in Birmingham to the Enterprise Centre in Birmingham. The complex at Cobalt Square in Five Ways has been named the fastest growing new business support organisation with the third sector and social enterprise areas of the West Midlands. And manager Jonathan Harris is here to tell us more. Jonathan, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. What's it all about? I mean, this has been growing hugely at Five Ways, hasn't it, over the last two years? It has. It's, um, it's a huge success story. Uh, the Enterprise Foundation uh, looked at the West Midlands region, realised that there was um, a need for all the main, as I call it, the main ingredients for starting new companies and new, and new businesses, from pre-startups through to small to medium en enterprises. And those main ingredients are access to finance, looking at accommodation, office space, uh, mentoring and support and all those there are support networks out there but it's very fragmented and I, I, we looked at ways of, of putting it all together and what we actually did we put all those three things together under one roof as such so the Birmingham Enterprise Centre started in October 2013 and 
I had the daunting prospect of having 20 workstations on one floor thinking, right, now this, we're going to fill this with enterprise people, enterprise-minded people, um, and how are we going to do this? But they actually started coming to us. They realised that there was something at last, under one roof, uh, giving the particular services that they needed. Within the first 12 months, we uh, grew from the second floor, just one floor, to five floors. Uh, almost 30 seconds, almost 30 companies within that, that first year, and a turnover of £180,000. And, I, and cause I, I remember the time when um, Business Link existed, and that was, that was marketed as this sort of one-stop shop for, business, for companies that didn't really know what sort of support was out there, didn't they maybe know what they wanted or what they needed, to just go and get the sort of advice that, um, that, that could point them in the direction of their, of, you know, their journey. That doesn't exist anymore. From the sound of this, this sort of replaces it, does it? Is it? Uh, to a certain degree, it does. Um, we started, uh, as I say, two years ago. Business Link finished, if to my best of my knowledge, about four years ago, and obviously funding started to 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 sort of rise, and funding started to dry up at that particular point. Therefore, we noticed that there was a gap in that particular service, so we can provide these services altogether. Uh, at a very competitive rate, and uh, it's been such a success, it's unbelievable. So okay. indeed, we, we have actually filled that gap to a certain, to a certain degree. G give us a, a flavour of the type of people, then, that you're working with. Um, oh, gosh, it ranges from people that are sole traders, people that are pre-startup, that simply have an idea in their head. They'll come to me, we look at it on a piece of paper, we start drawing up a business plan, a development plan, and then from then on, we're looking at finance, access to finance and enterprise grants that we can arrange, uh, signposting to various networks and also mentoring and the support. So that starts to grow. And I always describe it as one person on one workstation. And then maybe within three to six months, they start looking at a business partner. And then after that, maybe they need someone to do some admin. So they will then come to me and say, John, we've only got one workstation, I need three. Well, then we can start to provide offices. And the, the answer to the question, have you got any space, Jonathan, is yes. And what, g give us a flavour then of the type of success stories you've had. How big have some of these enterprises become? Uh, uh, the, the, the main, the, there are two case studies, as I call them, success stories, where a company has started off with just one workstation at Cobalt Square. They have now grown and moved, actually. The su their success story is incredible. They've actually moved to London, providing uh, technology similar to Google Glass. But it all has the third sector aspect to it, where there is a social return on what they do. And th at the moment, there is a care home facility that uh, the administration is run at Cobalt Square, but they're very shortly going to move because literally they're growing out of, uh, out of where they are. And then we can point them in the right direction. And, and so talking of growing out of things, you've got five floors at uh, your present home. Is, is there a possibility of maybe expanding to other locations across the West Midlands? Yes, that is definitely on the cards. What we're going to do is look at Solihull, Wolverhampton, and possibly further afield as well within the West Midlands um, region itself, the greater Birmingham area. So those are definitely our prospects for this year. So if we're sitting here in 12 months' time, say maybe, what would you have hoped to have achieved? Um, the dream, and, and we're on target to do so, is to have Birmingham as the hub and to have other smaller enterprise centres across the, the West Midlands and then bringing everybody together in a virtual, using new technology and uh, using the technology that's available, a virtual hub where we can actually bring people together and there's co-working, co-creation and that's how we see the, how it's going to expand in the West Midlands. Is there still a real appetite then do you think at the moment for, these, for, for small businesses to plough their own furrow, they don't feel that there's maybe too many obstacles in their way? Um, it's beginning to get a lot better. Um, certainly we started at the right time where there was confidence building to be done but at that particular time they realised there was somewhere else to go to now and that's where we came in at Cobalt Square. Uh, getting and instilling that confidence in you can actually go out there and you can make a difference is the, is the big key word really. There's three things to what we do. Um, one is to obviously to make money, two, to make a living, but also to make a difference. And that's exactly what we're trying to do at Cobalt Square. And I feel 
So far, we're doing a really good job, and I'm really proud of what we're doing. You obviously get a lot out of the business, being involved in this business yourself personally, it's clear to see. But what is it about this, this particular sector that, that has the feel-good factor from your point of view? It's the feeling of social enterprise, third sector companies, people that are actually working for the good, people that are actually making uh, a difference, and people not just going there for their own personal profit, not just putting in dividends to shareholders and so on. It's getting up in the morning and knowing that you're actually going to make a difference and then seeing that difference and then looking at the possibilities of co-working with other people who may have not even thought of working together, sharing common ground, sharing opportunities to co-create and that is such an exciting prospect and it really is coming on really strong in the West Midlands. So if I come to you with a potential idea what sort of time scale would you be looking at then to actually maybe get some kind of funding behind me to, to get up and running? How long does it the, take? The, the time scale, and um, forgive me for saying it's a journey, everybody says these things are journeys nowadays, and most people that will go out and look for um, help with their new businesses often go to places and then maybe within three to six months funding has gone and they say, well, thank you very much, good luck. We're actually financed and designed in such a way that we will actually be with them for three years. So therefore, if you came to me with a business idea, certainly within the first three to six months, there would be something tangible there to work with. And then we start looking at sustainability. Jonathan, thank you. It sounds like a fascinating uh, career to be in. That's all from Midlands Business Update this week. Remember, if your company has a success story to tell, a campaign to launch, or a point to make, get in touch with us through the Big Centre TV website or our Facebook page.